So that is the dua. Saying that now our thirst will go away by the breaking of the fast. This is a dua which we do before breaking the fast. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. My name is Devashish Ganguly. I am an engineer by profession and a freelancer journalist. Presently, I am reporting this for a paper. I would like to ask you with a question and answer session. My first question to you, are you proud of your country? Normally, journalists they ask one question and after I give the reply, the second question is trapping. Uh, uh, but, sir, but, 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 sir, no, let me, let me finish it. Please let me answer, I know. Let me finish to this allegation. No, no. Let us have this discussion free sense I of may, mind. Uh, sure, sure, I'll allow you. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm not blaming you. I'm telling most of the journalists. I'm not saying you are the same category. You may, you may not be. Already you, you have said it. Already you have said it. See, most of the journalists. See, normally, see, one thing is, brother, I'm in the field. If a person wants to ask only one question, he asks and he goes away. If he has two questions, see, this is logic. And he's waiting for the first answer. And after I give the first answer, the second question is trapping. If you put both the questions together, then the trap will not be there. But for me, no problem. Answer is the same. Whatever your second question is, I'm proud of my country, India. That's great. It is one of the few countries in the world which gives the right for the citizen of India to preach propagate its religion and practice. I am proud of my country. You have answered my second question. I am proud in you many have, ways. You have answered my second question. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, can we have the next question from the sister? This is another question by a non-Muslim. Hema Khattar Usman, she writes, you said there are some sheep in Muslim community doing wrong things, which media is propagating. Aren't these Muslims giving media a chance by doing it in the name of religion, which misleads non-Muslims? The question posed by the non-Muslim is a very good question, that there are some Muslims or black sheep in the community. Aren't these Muslims giving a chance for the media to propagate wrong things about Islam? These black sheep Muslims aren't actually Muslims. A Muslim will never do things which are wrong. A Muslim by definition means as a person who submits his will to Almighty God. Now these people who are black sheep, they are pseudo-Muslims. Their name may be Muhammad, Zakir, Abdullah, Sultan, whatever it is. By name you don't become a Muslim. You become a Muslim by deeds. When you submit a will to Allah, you become a Muslim. So these people actually are not true Muslims, but they have Muslim names. So they aren't bothered whether they're giving a chance to media or not, because they aren't bothered about the religion. Because they're not bothered about the religion, but... See, they are not bothered, so they're least bothered what's happening. But I'm blaming the media. Why is the media picking up the minority? If majority of the Muslims are doing this, and then you blame the religion, I've got no problem. But they are picking up this minority. Imagine if I tell you that Hitler incinerated 6 million Jews. Can I blame Christianity for that? If Hitler incinerated 6 million Jews, killed 6 million Jews, can I blame Christianity for that? No. Because nowhere does the Bible say that you have to kill and incinerate 6 million Jews. It will be devilish on my part. So therefore, I am blaming the media more rather than these black sheep. They are black sheep. They are going to be in every community. And I even speak against these black sheep in many of my lectures. But the media is supposed to portray a picture which is true. They can't pick up black sheep and portray as though they are exemplary Muslim. Or they should say, okay, this Muslim has robbed. He is only one or five or ten amongst one billion Muslims. I have got no problem. But they portray as though every Muslim is doing something wrong. If one Muslim is caught in drugs, as the majority of the Muslims deal in drugs. So this is what the media portrays is wrong, which are object to. The media should portray a fair picture. That's what I want. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. Dr. Zakir Naik, congratulations and best of luck uh, for starting Peace TV. I request all the audience to give him a big clap.
my question is why is it imperative to circumcise in islam the brother posed the question is it imperative is it compulsory to circumcise in islam is it fard whether it's not fard in islam it is a sunnah a sunnah muqda highly recommended sunnah it is mustahab it is mustahab in islam to circumcise it's not a fard but there are various reasons for that i being a medical doctor we can give a talk only on why circumcision should be done but it's a question answer time i'll just give you a few points today science tells us that if a man is circumcised he has less chances of having carcinoma of the penis of having cancer of the penis less chances negligible chances if you're not circumcised there are chances there are various diseases which can be prevented if a man is circumcised in circumcision we cut the prepuce the foreskin of the organ of the penis and here we realize that when a normal person goes for the call of nature when he after urinates there are droplets of the urine remaining in the prepuce in the foreskin this causes various diseases it can cause itching it can cause inflammation of the skin it can cause prepucite this many things so all the diseases are prevented if you are circumcised and beyond that when we go for the call of nature we even put water which prevents it further a person today science tells us he enjoys his sexual life more if he circumcised than non circumcised furthermore the chances of various other irritation of the skin is not there if you are circumcised today latest research tells us that a man who circumcised has less chances of having aids the virus of aids can spread faster if you are not circumcised there are various list of diseases which are prevented that's the reason today in america more than 50% of the boys after they are born they are circumcised they are muslim even the christians in america the doctor asks the parents do you want your son to be circumcised and more than 50% of them are circumcised not because islam says that because they know it is a benefit for the son hope that answers the question yes brother So akum my name is Imran Mohammed I'm an IT manager my question is regarding the media and conspiracy theories um how should the muslim respond to conspiracy theories such as america's trying to take over the world take suppressing islam etc etc all too often i'm finding muslims uh, who are not educated in islam correctly dive into the conspiracy theories more than the, the knowledge that we should be acquiring how should the muslim respond to the see conspiracy theories the brother has asked the question that how should a muslim respond to the conspiracy theory by the american the setter against islam and we don't have our own knowledge what should we do brother the first thing we should do is we should know our deen unfortunately most of the muslim do not know their own religion that's the reason we have this problem if we know deen very well this media would not have a chance to say what it's saying unfortunately we ourselves don't know our deen and that's the reason when the media says many things we muslims become apologetic we tend to agree i'll just give an example there was a very good pious muslim mashallah he comes and tells me the brother zakir do you know these talibans they are very ruthless people bad people i said why what happened because they beat the women and who told you I saw it with my own eyes. Where did you see it? He saw it on BBC. <laughs> see, I am not here to defend the Taliban. They are not my friends. Neither are they my enemies. I haven't met them. I am not to defend them. But when I keep on traveling, I meet people. I was in Malaysia giving a talk, and there was a couple. Both of them were doctors. They were gynecologists and a pediatrician. Both of them were doctors. They spent more than a month in Afghanistan, trying to help the injured people, and. that lady doctor she told me the shot they show on the television a taliban hitting the women they aren't taliban i said how do you know I said see because i have been with the talibans i know how they tie the turban for example we as non arab we will not find a difference between the way the ghatra is tied of the arabs but arab knows that the way an emirati ties a ghatra is different the way a saudi ties a ghatra is different the way a kuwaiti ties is different they know we don't know So she being with Taliban, she knows that the way the turban is tied in that shot, it can't be a Taliban. So even the shooting they did in Hollywood, where they did, I don't know. They didn't do a good job. <laughs> the media can change anything. For example.